that will see this and you know who you are and you have been intrigued by my guest today that you made it quite clear to me that you can't wait to see how she's going to respond to my weirdness. I don't know either, but I do know this. I am just uh, tickle pink to actually talk with her. Lisa is truly a special woman. Now, all of my guests are unique and special in their own way. But I literally binge watched all, and I don't do this, all of her IG stories from beginning to end. I literally binge watched them. I did not want to do anything else but watch each one of them from beginning to end all in one sitting. So um, I um, need to go to the next phase. And that phase is, um, well, we need to get her in here. So let's do that. <laughs> oh my goodness can you yes. comfortably hear me yes i can hear you can you hear me um you look fantastic and you sound exceptionally well um we did not color coordinate on purple today did we well, we don't have to tell them that <laughs> you know I'm, I'm such a horrible liar i think they would figure that out <laughs> That um, I got to give my little waves out to everybody. And, uh, of course, everyone is, is uh, accustomed to me doing a roll call. Uh, I'm skipping that today. I love each and every one of you. You know, uh, I want you to be felt that you are seen and heard. Uh, but uh, I really was looking forward to spending time with you today. You are the only show that I had for today. Uh, two reasons for that. There's two reasons. Two fundamental, important reasons. One is I went to the dentist yesterday, <laughs> so I needed to have my face uh, usable today, yes. and I only wanted to do that with you. If I had more than one show, that means that I would be smiling too much. I wanted to use all my smiles on you today because I know you're going to make me laugh. Um, you are the second reason, of course. First was a dentist. You're the second. Um, I do not let the music continue to go for a long time because I jump right into it. But I have a little bit more to say, and no one wants to hear me talk without music because it's very boring and I get really serious, like an old guy. So um, I'm going to leave uh, it, some of it uh, kind of uh, uh, ruminating in the background. First time ever. A lot of first time ever's with you. You have no idea that that's happening unless I say it. <laughs> first time ever. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. First time ever, girl. I just got to say that to you. All right. Oh, All right. All right. Just got to do that to you. All right. Cause... <laughs> I could totally do this to you, baby girl, but I'm not <laughs> going to do that to you. Because um, you laugh, Paxton. <laughs> well, you know, it gives a chance for everybody here Because see people will tell me later. They'll write me and tell me. Like, dude, seriously, you know, I was doing the live and it was on my lunch break. You started before, you know, I'm used to you starting late, man. And like you already started, had your guests on. People hated it when I first started this and I was on time. And then I went like, wow. OK, they like don't start on time, man. That's messed up. <laughs> it's like, OK, oh, all wow. right. It's my show, though. I do what I want. Yeah. All right. So one of a kind young lady that you are beautiful inside and out. I normally save this to the end of the show, but I'm going to give you a little taste of part of the end of the show. You are beyond your years in wisdom. You have insight that should only belong to insects building a house because <laughs> because we can't figure them out yet. And then, how did they do that? <laughs> they have so much insight. You have a natural instinct to um, share what you know and then challenge people without making them feel like you're going to beat them up, but there's a threat that you could. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just want to make sure I understood all the videos that I watched because I was like, okay, she can't reach me, but I'm kind of scared. <laughs> it's, like, it's always a challenge in there. So I'm not only challenging the listener, I'm also challenging myself. Okay. So. All right. I see. 
So technically, it's kind of like a rhetorical, motivational, not really a threat, but it's a promise of action, of consequences if you don't step forward. I get it. So there's a lot of things that come into play. Again, I do not let this music play as long as I've let this music play because I'm giving you clear warning that once this music stops, you are in deep trouble because the show then becomes yours. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Because I'm going to throw some things at you when we do this show today. Good. Um, binge watch every single video that you put out. No one. I've never done that with anyone. I literally had to watch each one and then try to think to myself, why isn't she getting paid to be a comedian? So, <laughs> but you are a blogger, correct? Yes, yeah, so I'm a blogger and I do, I'm a writer. I've uh, uh -huh. published a book. Also, I do public yeah. speaking when there is a public to speak to. To speak to, yes. Yeah. See, there you go. There's a joke right there. This is like, you know, you should be on the Johnny Carson show, but he's dead. But anyhow, so um, you're getting hearts on the screen. And uh, again, when the music stops, it's on like Donkey Kong. And I'm going to just be throwing stuff at you because yeah. I've got like, you know, stuff to ask you. None of it's written down. So here we go. Music is off. And here we go. So, uh, no, I don't do all that other stuff, you know, that normal people do. Uh, but I believe I'm normal um, of the bio and, you know, what schools you went to and what planet did you come from? I don't do all that kind of stuff. OK, because it, you're more important than what has already happened. Because your brain is moving at a speed beyond this solar system. Okay? So are you ready? All right. So you ready. I am trying to understand something about you. What's that? Uh, because it means a lot to me to understand people. Um, so you have a blog. And the last posting you had says, Curious about Unleash the Power Within from Tony Robbins. Learn yeah. all about it. You have a podcast that talks about Tony Robbins. Is that correct? Yes, because some, uh, some of my audience uh, prefer to listen. Uh, some people prefer to read. It really just depends on how they want to absorb the information. So I just did one of each. Make it easier on everyone. I see. All right. You have unique uh, IG stories. Um, playfully intelligent and uh, brilliantly sarcastically motivating i could come up with more words but that's not why people watch this they want to see the train wreck that is my show <laughs> with survivors that are my guests so here we go what is there about tony robbins that makes you want to talk about him it was an all-encompassing experience all -encompassing. okay i've really never heard was. anybody for, describe him. go ahead for, um, immersion. That's what it's called. Immersion. And you had I a will, Tony Robbins immersion. Is yes. that what you're telling me? I will preface this with, okay. I was not really, I had never purchased a Tony Robbins program. I had watched right. a few of his videos. So I wasn't okay. like, I'm not raving. Tony Robbins is number one. He's the best ever. Uh, because I got that part. That's why I'm starting with this. I'm going like, you don't look like a, a, a TR disciple. So I'm just wondering, go ahead. Yeah. You know, um, I asked other of my coaching friends about it and I, who have done it. And I said, yeah. is it worth it? What do you get out of it? Talk to me. And then they, they said, if you're ready for a transformation, if you're ready to take a huge leap forward, um, go for it. So okay. I did. You, you did. And uh, is this similar? To, if you had to compare the experience w with with that, the Tony Robbins experience, as it were, they knock things over here, the Tony Robbins experience. Uh, and let's say Lewis, Lewis Howes, Lewis, uh, you went to the Summit of Greatness? Yes. Okay. Compare the two. On a scale of one to ten, excuse me, that's wrong. That's wrong. Retract. Take it back. On a scale of one to three, three being, that's pretty good. From one to three, rate Tony Robbins and your experience at the Summit of Greatness. They are, it's comparing apples to oranges. They are. <laughs> You're going to say that. I knew I had a feeling you were going to say that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because um, uh, the Lewis Howes event was all these different speakers. Yeah. It wasn't uh, themed, you know, where the Tony Robbins one, the first day, you know, um, first day, second day, third day, fourth day, totally different. 
And each of those days had a goal where Lewis Howes, you were just learning from these incredible speakers, but there wasn't Correct. exactly an end goal. Correct. So um, you learned from both. You got something out of both. Which one of them hit the mark as to what you were expecting? I had, I went in with no expectations. Be, car be careful because Lewis will find you. I just want you to know that. Tony, Tony Robbins is too busy, but Lewis will find you. <laughs> I had, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I drove down to Ohio by myself and I was there alone. So the actual event was great. It was everything outside of the event that was really okay. all right. um, a new experience. Just being in a, and with all these people I didn't know and I had to find my own friends. I had to okay. network without having an in. I had to just walk up to people and I had my name right. tag and I'm like, hey, Toronto? <laughs> have you been <laughs> like canada what's up do you, you want to meet can we network have, do you know what can we make is? money together you know, like the idea okay so, anything, but yeah, okay so, but so where, by yourself go ahead no please yeah, go ahead with the tony robbins one it was at home so i had the comfort of home and all <laughs> familiar things i was okay. not thrust into a group of strangers that i had to okay. um try to find a common connection with social anxiety uh came out of the lewis experience based upon a video that i saw yes. tell me more tell me more about this thing that i i had to watch the video of course the completion like all of them but i'm trying to look at it and go like social anxiety from a woman who is willing to do a handstand fail okay so i'm trying to understand and she puts it on What's up with uh, the social anxiety that you talked about? Unless you're drunk. Uh, yeah. By the way, I got, I got, I got, I got my buddy. I got, I got a number of buddies on here. I'm, I'm not ignoring everybody. I'm just trying to cram as much as I am before she has to go. <laughs> but uh, Morris Therapy is here. She says, "I love Toronto." By the way, you hey. get some love for, 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 for T Town there, Toronto. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So what? What's you know? You um, mentioned that you. Yeah, I had. You were alone I and you weren't drinking. How'd you put it? Yeah, I was I was at a nightclub sober and by myself two things like I've been to a nightclub sober before but I've never been to one sober and alone yeah that's kind of especially for a woman that's kind of yeah well this was all the Lewis house people so there's an element of safety there but still I was still having this whole um no one wants to hang out with me uh, I don't have any friends wow. here I just had all those um you know insecurities coming up and then i was like i gotta go ah. yeah. yeah but from that experience did you feel yourself moving forward to the point that you were either thinking about the bucket list or you already were checking off stuff from your bucket list where were you with the bucket list by the, when you were doing the whole lewis house experience well, that was, we're going to call that, uh, that would be something I added to the new bucket list. So the regular bucket list is a bucket list of, um, I've already written. The new bucket list is that you add new experiences to, whether you planned on doing them um, as a part of a trip or not. Mm -hmm. But okay. those are things you add. So me taking this road trip down to the States um, by myself, that was, that was on the new bucket list. Attending That's, a conference. So that was huge. That yeah. you, you tackled some fears with that, which is really what the new bucket list and what you're talking about is, is about. If Correct me, though. It's about tackling it's, challenging fears or w w describe it for those who are trying to understand it. The new bucket list is just new experiences you didn't plan or on doing okay. or that you never thought you would do. So, oh, okay. Uh, on my bucket, um, if you go to um, the new bucket dot com. My bucket list is there. My new bucket list is there also. So oh. this is the one I'm adding on to where I've added, um, I was at my, my friend's farm who only, I, to my knowledge, had horses. And she walked up to me and handed me a chicken. <laughs> and a, whole, a, a okay. live chicken. Hey. And I have never held a chicken before. Okay, she that said, was my question. You never held a chicken before. She took a hilarious photo. If you go there, I look really excited. And um, I am really excited. 
and um oh, and that's a thing i had never done so uh, i threw that on the new bucket list because it wasn't something that i had planned okay what's the cat's I, name what's the cat's name this is Pac. Like oh Tupac lord Shakur. oh my goodness that cat is like eating good that cat is eating quite well he is he's gangsta. oh man he was a run he, through the litter <laughs> oh my goodness okay so you held a chicken so, and I've, um, believe it or uh, not, like there's other things, um, like even indoor rock climbing, I'd never done that. Uh, the opportunity came up and I did okay. it. So okay. it's just kind of opportunities going with the flow, a more spontaneous type of bucket list. All right. So um, as, a, as a person, as a woman who is tackling her bucket list, what was it like, again, correct me if I'm wrong, being raised by your grandparents it's it's different because they're from a different generation <laughs> not just like your parents generation right i thought you were gonna say planet i really thought you were gonna say planet <laughs> okay they're no, different that's generation they yes from here. got it they're from me yes <laughs> i'm not gonna debate i am not gonna debate you on that because i've seen your page <laughs> you are from another place okay uh, so, so it so it's it's kind of like I was raised with the same values that my parents were raised with. Okay. So in that, and, and also a lot of people get really sad when I tell them this part, but because I was raised by my grandparents, I listened to the music of the fifties and sixties. And then I was born in the eighties. So then I got the eighties. So mm. I miss the whole entire seventies of music and I don't, it does not resonate with me. I'm not all about it. And everyone gets real <laughs> sad when I tell them that. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, uh, considering the fact that you, you spoke of the 50s and 60s music, then you have good taste. But what I was going to say is... Uh, <laughs> but work ethic-wise. Work, work ethic. ethic. Okay. Work ethic-wise. Okay. You are, you are... Go ahead. Yeah, I, I am. I'm a cusper. I'm like Gen X and millennial. So I have the work ethic of Gen X, but I have the instant gratification of a millennial. Okay. All right. That explains a lot. Considering that you're drinking water instead of vodka. So I'm proud of you. Or tequila. I'm doing 75 so, I'm hard right now. So I have to drink. Oh, yeah. Time. By the way, yeah. To explain 75 hard. Now, if you're trying to motivate others to do their own personal bucket list slash new bucket list, why would someone even think about doing 75 hard, explain it, what it is, and what are we talking about? Because I, I saw the whole jump in the cold, like, water thing that you did, and your friend, and, she, okay, okay, go ahead. Because I was going to say there's something wrong with you people. Oops, I said it. Um, go ahead. You were going to say Go ahead. Go ahead. Explain it. 75 hard. Okay, so 75 hard is a mental toughness challenge. Now, here are the rules. Andy Forsella has created this beast. So, two workouts per day, 45 minutes each. One must be outside. You choose okay. a diet. Any diet, you pick it, you stick to it. No cheat meals. No booze. One gallon of water a day. A day you have to read 10 pages of a personal development book per day. And you need to post a photo every single day. Now, the photo part is of what uh the gains you're making so it's a full body it's a headshot it's is it just a pinky be, i think you're supposed to post a photo of the same photo every day okay i right. don't because my creative juices start flowing and i just start <laughs> taking pictures of things yeah. that i experience yeah. in the journey yeah. so right. that's what i do i'm probably breaking the rules but i'm following all the other ones yeah yeah so that that's seems a to... really it's a it's a mental toughness um challenge and okay. i right. i wrote a blog about it a lot when i did it last year yes this is my second time doing this and there, oh it's your second time i missed that part this is your oh, second time doing it yeah. yes yeah and the things that i learned about myself you know self-discipline time management wow. uh things like that and that when when i got to a point around day 30 last year where i was like screw this this is stupid. I'm done. <laughs> and what did I do? You I kept rolled going, up my you? damn yoga mat and I oh. did my second workout. So wow. <laughs> you 
it's just push, push, push. And the time management part has a lot to do with the water because no one wants to drink three liters of water at 9 p.m. Okay, so you started doing that. How technically did your kidneys respond to that along with your bladder? Okay, <laughs> yeah, the first, you're drowning the first week. I'm not even going to lie about it. You're legit drowning. Oh, you my are, goodness. I'm like... I think I put it on Instagram. I said, if you, you did. Need, if you need, if you're looking for me, uh, go need the bathroom. Yep. Because, yep. <laughs> because like. you're drowning. But after the first week, your body kind of gets used to it, and uh, and then you're back to normal. You're just uh, just drinking a lot of water, and there's an app to keep track. It's beautiful. So seventy five hard. The only person off the top of my head that I know that has been on this show that would want to do that and could probably uh would do that uh, is uh is a friend of mine her name is debbie i would love to see you two go at it because she does that kind of stuff yeah i give you a lot of credit for doing that but it was quite funny actually actually listening to you talk about it from the beginning you know doing it it, oh, it yeah. is your facial expressions are extremely funny because i'm looking at she's really doing this and she like it gets to that breaking point where like I'm not doing it, but she, then you're you're like totally not broke. You're like totally go like I'm gonna do it again. But you jumped into freezing cold water. Yeah. Why? What does that have to do with bucket list? Why not? Why not? You didn't even ask the question. You said why not? Why not? Okay. Why not? Um, and last year because of absolute boredom, I was learning about um, the benefits of cold showers and things like that. So I started to try it. You know what I realized? Cold showers make me absolutely furious. <laughs> like, I, I But you did it. I did. It was like for a couple, but every, every shower would be like just a couple, like a minute at the end of the shower, okay. hating my life, no fun. So uh, you're going to think this is insane, but... Doing, uh, jumping into Lake Ontario when it was, you know, five Celsius. Yes, I saw not that. Not as bad. I'm going to do it again. It really. Wait, I but the cold showers bad. you had a problem with? Yes. But the jumping is, <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. And the point, the point of doing those different elements, I call them adventures, those different adventures of life was stimulated because you had a friend that passed away. Yes. Tell yes. everybody about that, please. I, uh, when I was 32, um, I worked at a good friend. You're like a whole of 28. You're like, you're, you're like a whole of 20, when I was 25. You said like it was a long time ago, but go ahead. Uh, when I was 32, I was working with a friend of mine who I knew from high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 31, and because we, had, when I moved back, I had left my uh, an old job, and I had moved back to my hometown, and I didn't have a job. I moved back in with my parents. I had absolutely nothing to come back to. I just could not stay in that toxic job anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, he had, um, he had, uh, we hadn't spoken in over 10 years, and he messaged me, and we just started talking. And then I said, "Oh, I'm moving back home. I don't have a job." He said, "I'll get you a job." Wow. Okay, someone you haven't talked to in over 10 years, you're going to offer them yeah. a job. Hey, that's huge. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And so we were working together for about six months um, and, you know, became good friends. And then when I left that job for another job, um, you know, we still kept in touch. He'd be, um, he uh, uh, was, by that time, he started to try to date again because he was recently single when I first started uh, talking mm -hmm. to him again. And he's and I was a restaurant blogger, so he was asking um, for all these restaurants to take <laughs> to take people to, right, and right, right. Them all the goods, and then um, and then he'd have parties, invite me and my um, previous boyfriend over, and it was good, mm -hmm. you know, right. good guy. And then around Christmas that year, disappeared. Wow. And then um, in January of the following year, it would have been 2015. Okay. He, um, his mom tagged him in a, a Facebook post to say that he had a brain tumor Ooh. and that he was going to be going in for surgery. Ooh, wow. Yeah, so that was that was a shock. I, I, I mean, you don't usually expect that when you've been mm -hmm. talking to somebody and you and hanging out with them and they seem fine. Mm -hmm. And then, and then a month later, 
when his mom said he had to go in for surgery that he may not make it and and he didn't he didn't make it and i like that exploded my world when i was because i was raised by grandparents you know what old people yeah. do they go visit mm. more old people <laughs> so so uh, I that's watched, true <laughs> so as a kid in tow we would go visit old people and then they would get older and then they would get sick they would pass away this was right. that was my world that was the that was the world you lived in right yes and i'm very grateful to have have had that experience instead of mm -hmm. having a lot of you know tragedy but then this okay. happened and i was like that happens like he's 31 him and his wow. new girlfriend were looking at houses Wow! And I was, oh, it, it absolutely rocked my world. And then I was, all I could think about was all the things that he would never get to do. I'm like, oh, he'll never buy a house. He'll never, you know, get to get married and have kids. And he's never going to get to, he's always wanted to go to this country and to go to these concerts and all this. Right, he's never right. going to get to do that. When it hit me that I don't know what I want to do. Wow. And I'm still here. I yep. can do it. You can do it. Yeah. What do I do? And uh, and that's when all of this started, like a freaking avalanche that um, uh, that I just started uh, questioning everything in my life. And was I happy? Did I want? Did I want this? Did I like this? Did this make me happy? Did this make me sad? What? And I took a real step back and evaluated mm -hmm. things, and then. Um, I had, I had for 10 years, I had been trying to write a book and then this one just <laughs> like launched out of me because what? I had to, had to. <laughs> what was the book that hatched out of you and uh, launched out of you? Uh, it's called the new book. Yeah, right? there we go. The Say it again. How to get out of your comfort zone and live with no regrets. Perfect. So, perfect. This this launched out of me, and I I had to get it out so people would be reminded that our time is finite, and there's so many things that okay think about it you want to go to uh, you want to go on a trip you want this is a crappy ex example anyway you want to go on a trip uh -huh. and you're like oh we'll go next year oh we'll go next year okay well what year. <laughs> That's what year? <laughs> right. Next yeah. year? Two years? What? And then things like that. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's really expensive. Okay, so what are you doing in three years? Okay, <laughs> how much is the trip? If the trip's going to cost this much, how much do you need to save per month to go in three years? Right, right. Like, how badly do you want to go on this trip? It's, it's things like that where I get, I, I push and I question it because if you really want to do it or do you want to regret not going? There you go. My That's goal is to stop people from creating regret in advance. Do you see a lot of people doing it so easily that they create this regret because they are fearful and put things off? Yes. Um, some of it is, is very, um, like, do I deserve it? Some people okay. don't believe they deserve to go on this amazing trip that they've always dreamed of. They don't deserve, they don't believe they deserve to have the job of their dreams. They don't believe they deserve the life they've wanted. And that, that makes people put things off all the time. Or it makes them reevaluate whether they really wanted it or not. So, And when they find out, have you ever met, talked with someone and they found out, you know, I don't think I want to do that anymore or I don't really want to do that. And then they really have something else they want to do, but they wanted to hold on to that because maybe they were programmed, conditioned, talked themselves into mom and dad expected them to, their husband expected them to. And so they held on to it, but they really don't want to do it. Yes, there is a, a tendency for people to want to operate within other people's comfort zones. Got it. Um, they want to make other people comfortable. Right. So, um, best, a great example is skydiving. I okay. went skydiving. And when mm -hmm. I told people I was going skydiving, 
What do you think they said? They told you to You're keep your behind. Crazy. You keep your behind on the ground. They <laughs> told you to keep your. You better keep <laughs> yourself on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was stuff like that. But that's their comfort zone. Right. Now think about it. If every time you said you were gonna do something, someone else said, "Oh, that's too expensive," or "Oh, you might get hurt." No one would do anything. No one would ever have a story that they ended with. I can't believe I did that. That's the goal to have a story where you tell it and you go, I cannot, I can't believe I did that. That's a memory that will, you will never forget. And that's what I want people to create. It doesn't always so have to be that epic, but to do those things that you never thought you were going to do, even if uh -huh. it's something simple, it could be, buying a stranger lunch and you don't even tell them and you just feel good about it it's a little you know a little, a little something okay so i'm going for the non-epic things that you started doing and have been doing that did not cross the human behavior radar that people could catch what are some of the non-epic moments that you have had that have been a part of your bucket or, or supporting the supporting cast of your bucket list well, since, you know, obviously travel's not an option, especially for me in Canada, we are in COVID jail. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> so no. You wait, time out, time out. No, time out. No, you need a shirt that says that. You seriously need a shirt. <laughs> you need to market it with your book. Really Even do. if you just, not that you want to give it away, because I'm never real big about giving stuff away, but other, you know, other than our intelligence at times, but, but you should market that. As a, you get you, you buy the book and you get the shirt and get oh. us out of COVID jail here in Canada. That is actually You're, funny. That's seriously. pretty. You need to you need to market that. So I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you need to market that. Make That's COVID funny. Jail. All yeah. right. The yeah. government will probably come get you, but you should market it until They'd they come and like, pick you up. They they'd, pick you up. Yeah. Right. They probably be. They probably <laughs> buy all my shirts. Uh, <laughs> That's true. And burn so, them. So things even in things that I've done in the past year that did not require travel. Okay. Uh, like, oh, I did that polar plunge that yeah. frightened you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can, see, like, I, can, I can see all my, my over 40 uh, followers doing that. Yeah. And massive heart attacks happening left and right. <laughs> and it, it's all going to stream right back to your doorstep in Canada there. <laughs> You're knocking on your door. With, with this, everybody's going to bring a portrait of their lost loved one because they listen to you this, the, on this platform. <laughs> <laughs> As they take me off in handcuffs, <laughs> being a problem for the state. Okay, so what are some yeah. of the little things, the little things that uh, you were able to do you could pass on to someone else so that they could start turning their life around? Um, well, you know, to to create a bucket list, it's it's not as easy as you really think it is. It's not as simple as writing down a couple trips um, okay. or a couple right. adventures you want to do. There's mm -hmm. really a lot of thought to put in there and it doesn't have to be epic things i mean last year i sent flowers to somebody in secret that was on my oh phone. that's cool and, and that wasn't like i i didn't i epic. didn't get them. i didn't get them but that was that, we didn't know each other but i didn't get them i just want you to know that but go <laughs> so, go ahead i gotta talk to the neighbors um so <laughs> but something like that it made me feel so good it made them feel amazing wow and, like and i just never never told anybody you know Cool. Um, cool. uh, for Valentine's Day, um, I, we named a star. Okay, named a there star. you go. You named like a star. That, that was something on my bucket list that is like, it's simple, it's non-adrenaline, okay. but it's just something. It's like, hey, I named a star. Not okay, do you, do you check on it? Do you check on that star every now and then? Do you know where it is? Make sure it hasn't moved. Did it move out of the neighborhood? or still, still there. It's still there. Okay. All right. You can always count on the stuff up there being where it's supposed to be. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So down handy. here. Yeah. Down here. You know, the trees even stay where they're supposed to be until somebody messes with it. <laughs> but our watches, but our watches and our TVs, the microwave will go, you know, stuff will break down. Right. Uh, you know, uh, but uh, I have, okay. So 50 billion things that I'm trying to cram in and still keep a, the proper rhythm where people are not going like, why is Paxton with this person, Lisa going so fast and he seems so excited. Uh, I'm always excited. It's just I'm, you know, I'm older, so I'm, I'm much more cool. Anyhow, no, I'm just joking. I just made that up. So I got to ask you this. Um, are you a person who likes to cook? 
Yes. That's something easy to cross something off a bucket list, actually. It's trying new recipes, new foods you've never tried before. And see, it's not adrenaline. It's just okay. trying something new, new experience. You could have a favorite food out there yeah. and you have never even tried it. Right. So don't be afraid to try something new is a part of what you're talking about. But overall, your main objective, okay, is for a person not to stay in someone else's comfort zone. Is that yes. right? All right. Yes. You didn't lose. You didn't lose me, right? Okay. No, We're still there. No. I'm still so there. So many of okay. us are held back by the comfort zones of others because they want to want to please other people. You want other people to be comfortable. Like when I told when I told them I was gonna jump out of a plane, they were uh, not pleased. Uh, okay. And but I did it, and I can say I did it. And and it was not easy. I will tell you that it was not easy. Um, but I'm glad I did it. It's one of those things. And I still, when I think back, I still can't believe that I did it. But you were bored part of the way through because your brain got, you got bored. I just know you did. I was going to bring this up at the very beginning. I actually was going to start the show about the whole skydiving thing because I, you are so intellectually quick of wit. Yeah. And uh, you're so self-aware of what's happening, your grandparents instilled that in you, that you are beyond your years, so you're moving at a different speed than most people your age. So you can't de you can't deny me on this. This is true. I know because no. I know what I'm talking I, about. I absolutely so, did. I did. So I did. so you got certain things where somebody your same age would be going still screaming all the way down, as you said in the video. Part way you're like, okay, I'm done. You know, yeah. you're you're good. You're going, your maturity level is, is so much higher. You're sitting there being bored and other people going like, what's your problem? You're going like, well, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> like, like, yes, it's like, everyone, everyone when I got on the ground. It's like, that was life changing. I want to do it again. My life's changed forever. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. why? Why? <laughs> you see, like, why? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's but pretty. Uh, my life has not changed. Okay. So that pretty much explains the seventies. So you got the 50s and 60s and you were born in the 80s. So what you actually have is you did not get the 40s and the 70s because they're the same. Now, you may not necessarily either agree, whatever the case may be. I really don't care because I'm in my own comfort zone. But what I was going to say is hopefully you don't lose me there. And, and we, we, But uh, what I was going to say to you is if you compare the 40s and the 70s, you'll find that they're pretty much the same. Everything is an adrenaline rush. To completion but from the really? 50s and 60s oh yeah you'll, you'll see i i've actually i ran this yeah i ran this by my daughter so it's it's amazing how decades can repeat themselves every few every few decades you wow. are a person who how can i put it you had to tell your former boyfriend that it things were going to change and he wasn't good with that because you gave him a couple of things to well you buy a house and something else and go to Europe. yeah tell everybody about that experience from beginning to end how did that well, work out for you or as, as as you like to say as dr phil says how's that working for you how's that working out for you <laughs> how's that working uh, out for you <laughs> well it was an eye-opening conversation and i really hope that more people, not just me, um, you know, have those conversations sooner than later. I mean, okay. I was obviously super late and being like, hey, what do you want in life? What's a dream? And it was at How that How long were you guys together before you had that conversation with him? I'm just, I'm not trying to laugh at you. I just find it interesting. You're going to How, laugh. Are were you, you wait, 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 let me, let me guess, let me guess. Uh, you, you both were together for at least uh, 26 months. Six years. Yeah, you and I would have to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> I would, if my daughter came to me and said, we've been together six years, and then you had to talk to, first I'd slap her on the six-year part, and then I'd slap her on the conversation part. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Kind of funny that because I, it don't take a guy that long to figure it out. Because <laughs> I think my mom is watching this. Oh, so, so anyhow, after you, really went to the, after you went to the, after you went to the convent, <laughs> All right, go ahead. So, 
you had this conversation with him and, and he he looked at you and or didn't look at you and said and he was like i don't want either of those things yeah so i'm sorry that sounds like what a, what a guy would say that. you didn't discuss it there was nothing to discuss after <laughs> that so i because uh, i wasn't about to like i had just had this uh, a friend died and I was in this heightened state of mourning and emotion and I just figured uh, out that I'm right, alive yeah. and I can do things and I want to do these things and he didn't want to do them and I was like life is short well I'm doing them too bad <laughs> okay come on come on I'm gonna give you a high five through the screen high five on that high five okay <laughs> you, you go like I'm doing them <laughs> that's yeah. good now you you leave from that space and dealing and time and in 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 you leaving him what happens next that's the part i have to ask you you leave dealing with him and now you're dealing yourself that was, what was that like it was a transition. six years you were with somebody now yeah. you're on your own it was a transition i mean i was here um and so now I'm only re responsible for me and my dreams, but I also had a lot of healing to do. I also had to think about, hey, I was in this relationship for that long, and we didn't know that about each our we didn't know that about each other. I didn't know that yeah. about myself. I wow. got some, I got some work to do. <laughs> so yeah, but it wasn't until 2017 did I really get into the personal development state. Um, space and really start working on myself and but it's been like full full steam ahead since then and i am like addicted to learning and seeing what i can do that's what i noticed about you 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 are a human walking talking sharing caring sponge yes some people are a sponge and they keep it for themselves and they tinker away in their own little workshop of life you on the other hand find some kind of way to get on a surfboard and ask others, you know, hey, get yours, let's go surfing together. But letting them know there are consequences, you could fall off, but, you know, you just get back on and you just pick another wave. And that's that's almost the way you come across my, my, my best analogy for right now, considering that I went to the dentist yesterday and I still get to take drugs. But what I was going to say is, <laughs> that's what I was going to say, pretty good so far. Uh, you can't even tell I'm on them. Well, maybe. But he was gonna <laughs> say, <laughs> everybody that normally watches me is going like he's talking a little faster than normal today. But he, so um, he's not as laid back. What I do notice though about you is that you find a way to give people different angles to look at the 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 life rainbow life life's rainbow. You have a way of talking about something in your videos that gives people a different angle to look at it but i mean more than an angle you speak as if you're a human compass so you give people an opportunity to look at it from the north from the south from the east from the west and when it, when you're really clicking there are times you put out videos and you talk in such a way you're like google you're like google maps you take people up a lot three thousand feet and say how does it look from here this is what you need to try to do because you have that gift i need to know how often were you Google mapping your life and you were using a compass to redirect what you got going on? Did it take you a year? Did it take you two years? Or are we talking four years from 2017? And, yes. And ongoing and counting. And ongoing. And the more, because the more I learn about myself, mm -hmm. the more I find out what else I need to work <laughs> on. Yeah. And then I dive into that. So it's a very, it, it, it's just, a, it just keeps going. It's like going down the rabbit hole. You, you ne there's no bottom. <laughs> Techn technically, the way you remind people of that, that there is no bottom, that's part of the main reason why we're having a conversation today, because that's what I picked up about you, that there is no bottom. That, that if a person keeps shifting, they will find out something new about themselves. They can upshift, downshift, but sometimes they need to shift and change lanes left or right as well, and they'll find something new. You seem to present people with a beautiful challenge 
and a measured amount of kind, loving threats uh, of consequences if they don't at least try it. Um, I'm yeah. going to need to take a commercial. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to say something. Go ahead, please. I was just going to say that there's, when I learn, when I learn something that I know everyone has learned, but I can apply it differently to my life. Yeah. I know I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. I know if, if yeah. I can apply this differently, so can, ever, so can other people. Okay, so when you, when you do that, that's exactly, when you do that, now that I know you're saying you're raised by your grandparents, that's when I feel I see grandparents talking. I don't see you as old, but I hear their maturity ringing through you because you have found it to be true that a person has to view life in the way that you speak. So your maturity takes you to say things that others would look at it and go like, that can't be her saying it. She's just <laughs> like me, but it makes sense. So you're really good at that. But commercial break is coming, but I have to do this before that. Okay, All here right. we go. All right. If you don't sacrifice these, uh, this is a post you have. If you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want becomes what? The sacrifice. Damn on, girl. You know your words. Go on, girlfriend. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I'll give you some. Give you some. <laughs> All right. So if you don't want, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want becomes the sacrifice is the posting. That posting you made was on January 19th of this year. Yes. Your, your, the caption is one of my favorite quotes. This is what you, you write in the, uh, excuse me, in the comments. You put your, you've probably seen it before here, but it still hits hard talking about the statement. And this is what you put. You're too funny. You know that? You're just absolutely too stinking funny. Here you go. You say, are you willing to sacrifice your dream? Are you willing to sacrifice Netflix? I just think that's funny. And now you <laughs> now you kind of hit close to home for me. Then you go, are you willing to sacrifice chocolate cake? Okay. I'm not going to call you the devil, but you're, 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 you're moving in that direction. Right are you willing to sacrifice sleep? So are you willing to sacrifice your dreams? Are you willing to sacrifice Netflix? They're going to be looking for you for saying that. Are you willing to sacrifice chocolate cake? And then you ask, are you willing to sacrifice sleep? Mm -hmm. What are your dreams worth to you? Is the, the caption you put with that picture. Have you sacrificed chocolate cake for your dreams? It depends on the dream. I was trying to make it broad. <laughs> so if someone's just, trying to get more, is trying oh, to get more man. fit. I just wanted a yes or a no. Not, I didn't want a commentary in a blog post. I just wanted a yes uh, or no. <laughs> I am right now. No booze, no cheat meals. 75 hard. Okay. All right. 75 hard. Okay. So, so 75 hard as the leading factor, the answer would be a yes or a no. It would be yes. It would be yes. However, if there is no 75 hard, would you sacrifice Netflix? Oh yeah, yeah. Easy. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's easy. As if you you curl up with a book way before you actually do Netflix, huh? Or I'm I've, I've signed up. I've got a lot of courses going right now, so there you go. There you go. So you yeah. got stuff to do. You got you're busy. You're busy. Yeah. Okay. Because you're busy, your time is precious to me. But my time with you is uh, it's not ending. I need to take one more segment with you. If it was up to me, I literally had it planned to do three. But I, I didn't want to break break your back uh, in regards to your time because um, the next few posts that I'm going to talk to you about, um, uh, well, we'll see in the second segment. In the second segment, we'll, we'll see. You have survived the first segment, but I always talk to my guests a little bit before they actually come on. And uh, it is a joy to me when my guests tell me that they're nervous because I get to watch them bloom before my eyes from being nervous to totally relaxed. And you came on extremely relaxed. Or were you nervous? No, I was relaxed. You, you're just chilling. You're just chilling. You're I making a killing. This. You're just totally. Listen, okay, so. You said, are you ready to have fun? <laughs> I said, 
You yes. cannot tell people what I talk to you about before the show. I can and only then you do that. Me if I was nervous, I'm like, I'm not nervous for fun. I'm ready for fun. Uh, that's, that's, that's what you said. That's what you said. So I need to make sure that when we go to the second segment, which is really my segment, you know, I kind of dance around you in the first segment. When I do two segments with people, which is the norm, the second segment is when I pretty much take over and I get to unwrap you and your personality in front of everyone because they will indeed see what I see about you and they will fall in love with you and want to follow your page because you're so innocent before all of the universe. So, so, so we're going to uh, we're going to come back after commercial break. And for those of you that have often asked me, it really is a commercial break for me. No, I, it's a public service channel. I do not have sponsorship. I am the sponsorship. So, so it's coming out of my pocket. So uh, we're going to be back. Uh, we will uh, talk with Lisa again. Lisa, you have been absolutely more than I expected. The, the show prep with you was so much fun. Uh, but um, all the fun ends when we come back in the second segment because I get to torture you. And we're going to play a game like usual. And uh, we're going to do some other stuff that you all will right. find out. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Nope. Nope. You will find out about when we come back. Because all babies need to be respected. Okay? <laughs> Okay, I just had Don't to do that. I got too much equipment to play with that I never use. So anyhow, so I'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back, Lisa, in just a moment. In about 15 minutes, everybody, we'll be back. 